Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1096. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how women are more stressed about money than men. Yes, a recent survey was done by Elvest, and it's saying that money stress is dominating women's lives. In both instances, women were out worrying men. 59% of women were stressed about money more than once a week, and 43% of women actively worry about money at least once a day. Now with inflation and higher interest rates and all kinds of financial things changing this year and since the pandemic really, we're finding a lot of people are carrying more financial stress. And at the end of the podcast, we'll talk about how to deal with some of that financial stress and how to reduce that stress. But it's very interesting to see, first of all, what people are stressed about. Now, the stress can be different depending on what generation you're in. Gen X and baby boomers are more likely to be worried about inflation, 91%, a possible recession, 81%, and having to cut back on spending, 76%. While younger women who are millennials and Gen Z are more likely to be worried about reproductive rights, 63%, job security, 62%, representation in government, 54%, housing prices, 51%, and cost of childcare, 42%. Very, very different focuses just depending on your generation. Now, this is not something that has always been the case. Women have actually changed their opinion about financial wellness, and they're three times more likely to prioritize financial wellness in 2022 as they were just a year ago. In 2021, women ranked financial wellness as the least important form of wellness, less important than physical or emotional or spiritual wellness. That was 14% of women thought financial wellness was important. But this year, in the same ranking, women were now three times as likely to see financial wellness as critical over physical, emotional, and spiritual wellness. And of course, that's not surprising with all of the financial shifts and challenges that we've experienced this year. What's also interesting is that financial priorities vary by gender. So 36% of women are currently investing versus 63% of men are currently investing. And while men's top financial priority is their retirement, women say their top financial priority is their family. And only 31% of women have met with a financial advisor before, compared with 59% of men. In spite of that, women are making the right money moves, despite turbulent times. 75% of women have invested for retirement and have not paused their contributions. And 63% of women have cut back on daily spending. So they're doing the right thing to keep going with their retirement contributions while trying to manage their day-to-day spending a little bit smarter. Only 38% of women reported feeling concerned about market volatility versus 58% of men, which may explain why women didn't change their investing habits and stayed the course with their retirement contributions. Now, this has also impacted the way women think about work. 55% of women are looking for a new job to increase their salary. And also they're looking for more security. One in two women are currently concerned about their job security and employment. So that's 50% of women really concerned about are they going to have a job or are they going to lose their job? And that is extremely stressful. It's very hard to get through day to day and just go through the normal daily functions and do your job and handle your family 
when all you can think about is, am I gonna have a job tomorrow? If not, what am I gonna do? What are my plans? How do I get ready for this? That is extremely stressful. So now you understand why there's so much stress happening and where that stress is coming from and how people are dealing with it. Now, you probably know yourself well enough to know how to do some self-care and reduce your stress, but just in case you need a few ideas, I have some for you. So here are nine different ways that you can reduce your stress. Number one, I think it's smart to be prepared for what it is you're really stressing about. So if you're worried about losing your job, which it sounded like 50% of people are, then think about updating your resume, your LinkedIn profile, all the things that you might have to have ready in case you need to look for a job. You might also go to lunch with some of those people that you haven't talked to for a while that you can kind of network with, maybe people who work at a company that you're looking at as a possibility for your future in case your current job doesn't work out, or even contacting a headhunter. All of those things get you prepared for the possibility of a job change. So it's good to take action in that direction if that's what's really stressing you out. Number two, if it's not job stress that's really causing you stress, then identify what it is that's stressing you out. Is it having too much debt on your credit cards? Is it not being able to save money? Whatever it might be, identify what it is that's causing you the stress and see what you can do, i.e. cancel Netflix or subscriptions or get a part-time job or start a side hustle. What are the things you can do that can relieve the stress that you have? Number three, if there's a way that you can save more money, do that. So it's always going to be helpful to have more cash in the bank and that just can help you feel like you're ready for any contingencies. One easy thing to do is just go through your house, clean it out, put it in the garage and have a garage sale. That's an easy way to spend a couple Saturdays and make a decent amount of money. Number four, stay away from doing any kind of binging. Don't be binge shopping or binge eating or doing anything that really is overindulging that's gonna make you sick or add to your stress. Number five, exercise whenever you can. If you can take some walks or go on a nice hike, that's always helpful. Even putting on some music and dancing around the house, if that's your chosen exercise, that can be stress relieving. You don't necessarily have to go to the gym, but if you enjoy going to the gym, then by all means, go to the gym, work out on machines or do aerobics or do Pilates or whatever it is that you do at the gym, that definitely helps relieve the stress. Number six, soak in a bubble bath. I know that at times when I'm very stressful, just pouring a bath with some bubbles in it can be very stress relieving. It's just relaxing. I can get my thoughts together, think through some things, and it just is a nice solitary thing to do to relieve stress. Number seven, make sure you're eating healthy. Eat some greens, eat some vegetables, add a few fruits, some nice protein. Try to stay away from the processed food, the junk food, the fast food, and make sure you're getting your vitamin D and some extra supplements of that could be helpful. Most people are pretty low on vitamin D. Number eight, you can get your mind off of your stress by listening to relaxing music or watching a fun movie. Make sure it's not depressing or something that's going to stress you out more, but something funny, a good comedy, a good romantic comedy, sitcom, whatever, something that can just let you veg out, get your mind off of it, and hopefully relax a little bit. And number nine, it's always healthy to do affirmations. Affirmations put positive thoughts in your mind. And by writing down sentences of positive thoughts that you can repeat to yourself, that can strengthen your belief in those things happening. Now, this is something I've podcasted about in the past, so you can look up my podcast about affirmations. They're also in my books. But I do believe that having a positive belief for an outcome is really important. Studies have shown that our subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and fiction. So whatever you're saying to yourself, whatever you're telling yourself, whatever you're believing with certainty, that's what your physical body is actually reacting to. So if you're worried that you're gonna be on the street and homeless, that's the stress that you're putting on your body. But if your mind is going in a positive direction, that things are gonna work out, you're gonna be fine, more money is coming your way, prosperity is happening, your job is secure, 
Whatever it is that you need to be more certain about, saying those affirmations over and over again can actually help. And I like to put a sentence in between the affirmations so that your mind doesn't argue with you. So for example, if you were to say, I'm worth a billion dollars, your mind would say, no, you're not. And it would argue with you. So to stop that from happening, you put an already true statement in between the affirmations. So you could say, I have enough money to pay all my bills every month and money left over. My name is Linda. I'm grateful for everything I have and that my job is secure. My dog is Penny. You can just intertwine already true statements in between each affirmation that you're saying. And then what you want to do is just use repetition. Say it morning, noon, and night. First thing when you wake up, last thing before bed. Those are always good things to help solidify your belief system. This alone can help you reduce stress significantly because it will change any negative thoughts that you have into positive beliefs. And that's something that's extremely important right now because what you believe in your mind is also impacting your health, your physical body. So this is something that I think is timely to focus on. And like I said, if you wanna go back and listen to other mindset podcasts or podcasts about affirmation that I've talked about, that would be a 10th thing that you can do to relieve stress. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.